The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. We got about 25 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets, folks, green across the board right now. Quite a sell off into the close of yesterday. We take a look at the SPs. 2 p.m. Eastern time, you're trading at 45.76. You give up a solid 30 points coming into the close. Now, I mentioned that because on the program yesterday morning, what I did is I went back to Tuesday morning and we had a similar 30 point sell off uh, towards the end of the day. Not quite 30 points, but in the last 15 minutes, you traded from a price point of about almost 45.80 down to below 45.65. We get a similar sell off late in the day yesterday, even more exaggerated from 45.75 down to 45.45. Right now, up about 15 points but you see the action overnight not too much of a sustained gain in that market big day of earnings today we get amazon we get apple among other companies but two of the big dogs out there with their numbers after the close tonight and we got some gdp numbers a little bit of a miss this morning jobless numbers as well let's jump around to some commodities before we get into it bitcoin Back above 60,000, 61,220. Got crude trading a little bit lower, 81.82 in crude. Gold up three dollars this morning at 18.01. You've got silver down seven cents at 24.11, and notes and bonds. How about that drop, folks, on the GDP number? We're talking about a yield right now. As I pull it up, we're down 15 ticks right now on the 10-year. You have the 10-year yield at 1.57%. 1.57% 1 right now, 130.21 in the 10-year. Backing that out, you can see kind of right where we were yesterday, right? On that spike down at 1030, 1.57% right now. We did make it to quite a low, though, as we had some higher price. You look where we were in terms of where we were last night, 130.107. We're at 130.21 on that 10 year we jump over to the volatility index right now market paying attention to that sell-off yesterday when the vix moves it moves from 1560 to 1729 still slightly elevated in terms of where we were yesterday 1670 volatility premium priced into this market with a little bit of sell-off yesterday going to be an interesting mo open with everything we have going on let's get into the economic numbers u.s post weakest growth of pandemic recovery on supply woes the estimate was for a 2.6% annualized gain, gain in GDP um, pace in the second, in the third quarter this was, right? I believe this was. Let me pull it up exactly. Yeah, I believe it's third quarter. The the 6.7, yeah, 6.7% pay, pace was in the second quarter. They come in at 2%. The market was looking for 2.6% here. The deceleration reflected a sharp slowdown in personal consumption, which grew at just 1.6% pace after a 12% jump in the prior period. Shortages, transportation, bottlenecks, it's all the usual suspects. Rising prices and the Delta variant of COVID weighed on both goods and services. Spending, uh, some of the other data points to get around in here. I wanted to bring up uh, inflation adjusted business investment cooled from the rapid pace of growth seen over the past year as manufacturers struggled to fulfill orders. Non-residential fixed investment rose 1.8 percent on an annualized basis. Now, the slowdown in consumer spending reflected weaker motor vehicle expenditures. Get ready for this one, which subtracted. 2.39 percentage points from the GDP during the quarter, almost 2.4% from the GDP pulled out, having to do with motor vehicle expenditures, slowdown in consumer spending. And folks, just as a, a service, if you don't need to buy a brand new vehicle or a used vehicle right now, might make sense to wait a little bit. Doesn't mean they're going to come down. It's just that uh, that makes sense when you think about, right? If you're going out, you need a car, you can go get a car because it's not coming down next month probably to any dramatic degree if you do need that car. But if you don't need it, not sure I'd pull the trigger right now on a new vehicle with everything going on. Now, you jump from that, we also get jobless claims. 281,000, pandemic low, pretty good number. Uh, the market, I think it was looking for just around that number in terms of where they were. 
Dropped by 10,000 to 281, lowest number since mid-March of last year. I believe you had continuing. Yes, here we go. In all, 2.2 million people were collecting unemployment checks the week of October 6th, 16th. Uh, yeah, that's a staggering number, but not really important in the context of things. Down 7.7 .7 million from a year earlier. We all know a year ago that things were still rough. Hiring slowed sharply last month to just 194,000 new jobs after averaging 607,000 a month for the first eight months of the year. That's talking about jobs here, partly because companies can't find enough people to fill their job openings. 10.4 million in August, the second highest record going back to 2000. Uh, we get both those data points at 8.30 this morning, and the market kind of just takes it in stride, right? Remarkable that we get a miss like that on GDP, especially when market was already looking for bad data in terms of we're coming off 6.7% just last quarter, and you're talking about 2.6% on an annualized basis, and you can't even come in at that number, you come in at 2%, maybe the market thinking that that motor vehicle segment putting a hurting on the GDP, uh, when we had the GDP accelerating, that was a big part of that as well. The, the cars have been a big part of the CPI, et cetera, all of that stuff. So it's really remarkable how motor vehicles have infiltrated, infiltrated so many data points that we look to, whether you're talking about CPI, whether you're talking about GDP, uh, that motor vehicle segment is just so skewed right now, it's really putting some big numbers into those uh, data points that we get throughout the month. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. We have a lot of companies with their numbers, folks. Let's jump to Ford first. Ford, I think, when did they come out? Were they out last night? Yeah, last night with their numbers. Uh, strong numbers, accelerate higher. I had to question a second because it said, I saw it published 3.35 p.m., but yeah, I saw these numbers last night. Nearly doubled Wall Street earnings expectations, slightly beat revenue projections for the third quarter, uh, increased their guidance for the second time this year, increased availability of semiconductor chips at higher vehicle shipments in the third quarter, enabled it to post higher than expected results. That's 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 quite a rosy scenario of what we usually hear, right? Uh, in terms of the chip sector hitting automakers, in terms of supply constraints, in terms of delays at ports, they come in at 51 cents versus 27. They take in almost $700 million more in 90 days in terms of revenue of 33.2 billion. Market was looking for 32.5 about. Uh, and they pop higher. They have new guidance. Earnings between 10.5 and 11.5 billion adjusted earnings. Not a bad number. Up from nine to ten was the previous. Uh, free cash flow between four to five billion. Strong numbers across the board. And you have Ford jumping up more than a dollar, about a dollar thirty, about nine percent right now. You're trading higher for Ford numbers on their numbers last night after the bell. Comcast beats expectations for revenue, earnings, and internet customers. The company reported 300,000 net additions for high-speed internet customers, which was slightly ahead of expectations. 58% uh, revenue growth. Staggering numbers here. Comcast has been on quite a run recently. They beat on revenue. They beat on earnings. And as I said, they beat on high-speed internet customers. Comcast did not report signups for Peacock, the streaming service, which offers both paid and free options to customers. 54 million signups as of July. Here's the thing. Be careful of that part of that business. Comcast, Peacock, that's going to be a big deal. But you can sign up for free, never even watch it, drop an email address in there. I think I did that during the Olympics, never even watched it, and I'm counted as one of those 54 million. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now up about 14 points, trading at 45, 49. We get the NASDAQ up 76 points. NASDAQ 100 charging. I think that's an all-time high, 15,717. Yes, it sure is yesterday. Microsoft, it just did not stop for Microsoft yesterday to the upside. Microsoft reached a high of 326.10. Right now, you're up about a dollar from their close yesterday at 323. You're trading at 324. And, of course, we get Amazon after the bell tonight. We get Apple after the bell tonight. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time on Tiger TV, the TD, TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team over there, walking you through the market action, setting up hypothetical trades. Kevin Hinks, we got fundamental news, man. We got GDP, we got jobless numbers, and we got tech earnings. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, big day, biggest day of the week in terms of numbers and high profile. Amazon and Apple, and don't forget Starbucks coming out with earnings. We just got a GDP print that was interesting in its number, a, a miss on the headline number, but a little beat in terms of expectations on consumer expenditures. So, uh, you know, when you look at everything that happened in the quarter, you know, consumer spending was bound to slow down. It did resurgence in COVID cases, you know, shut down some parts of the country. It did. Government assistance payments and uh, social benefits programs decreased. They did. So not surprising that the numbers are coming down. It came down maybe a little more than everyone thought. But the jobless claims number was a good number at 281,000. So all things considered, you know, coming off a pretty weak final hour and a half of the trading day yesterday, um, Markets are firmly in the green here to start the day. Obviously, Tommy, that is subject to change without notice. It's always, man. I love this market. We had quite a little sell-off yesterday to end the yeah. session, uh, and we bounced back today. But those tech stocks so strong yesterday. Microsoft, I did. we were chatting yesterday, Kevin. That thing just charged higher all day, it seemed like. Uh, auto, uh, Motor vehicles, Kevin, right? We talk about it many times. I kind of kicked off the show when I was talking about it. It's pretty remarkable how that sector of the economy is just having such an impact on so many data points. We've talked about it, whether we go back months um, for the CPI data and the influence that just some of those car prices have had on the inflationary data that comes out. And then you have the slowdown. I'm reading this from Bloomberg, Kevin, talking about the GDP this morning. The slowdown in consumer spending reflected weaker motor vehicle expenditures, which subtracted 2.39 percentage points from GDP during the quarter. 
Uh, what do you make, if anything, and I know it's just a lot of noise sometimes in these numbers, about how the cars and motor vehicles, whether it's new, used, and that's a consumer spending thing of it as well, but 2.4 percentage points of GDP just talking about motor vehicle expenditures. Pretty remarkable how that consistently is just having such an impact on, on a lot of this data, man. Yeah, that, that's why, again, I'll, I'll pound the table on get these semiconductor chips back on the market. I mean, we've been waiting five, six, seven months now for these things to come in. Where are they? That's what I do see. I'll tell you what. I take my daughter to school every day, and I drive down a pretty busy road with a lot of car dealerships. Second day in a row, Tommy, I've seen trucks full of cars in front of dealerships. Haven't seen those in quite a while. So maybe things are starting to loosen up ever so slightly. And, you know, Ford, what an incredible earnings they put out. Not only the numbers they put up, but the guidance for next year. Ford really, I mean, that, that stock's going to have a big day. They reinstated their dividend. Not really surprising that they reinstated the dividend, but uh, Ford is, is surging higher uh, this morning. So, yeah, the cars, listen, it's real simple. Get all these employees back in jobs. Get all these semiconductor chips back made and in the market. Get all these goods off these boats sitting on these ports and get them into the U.S. economy. And I guarantee you things will get better, Tommy. I like it, man. And, and you beat me to Ford. You did, because the one I was going to say um, was that they talked about increased availability of semiconductor chips, maybe a little bit what you're talking about, those vehicles coming back on the lot and higher vehicle shipments. I said that's kind of contrary to the things that we've been hearing lately, right? That increased right. availability, hopefully that backlog. Um, because, man, what happened to the Internet of Things, man? It seems like everything is going to have a chip in it pretty soon. So we need some microchips and just about everything we're going to be purchasing. Cars, the numbers they come out with, man, staggering in terms of the, the revenue that they've lost over the last year, uh, et cetera, not pushing them out. So we jumped to today, of course, Kevin. We have, like you said, we got uh, just more than the two big dogs. You got Starbucks out there, among many others. What are you guys going to be talking about coming up on the show at 12 noon today, Kevin? So, obviously, we're talking about Apple, like Folio's going to do a presentation on Apple. We're going to talk about Amazon. But Nathan Peterson uh, from the Swab Center for Research is coming on. He's going to talk about a stock, BKKT. It's called Back Holdings. And it is a stock that just IPO'd, just started trading options. And it's pretty incredible because um, it's in the crypto space. And, and uh. so we're... He's been pounding the table that he wants to do a presentation on this thing. So today we're doing it. It's going to be pretty interesting. The whole crypto sector, man. I was pulling up uh, earlier. So, of course, I'm a New England Patriots fan, Kevin. Tom Brady, to his credit, man, he's deep in that crypto uh, circle. And it seems to be going well for him. I read this morning, new company, I think it's Crypto.com. They're doing a $100 million campaign, Kevin. Matt Damon's going to be on the front of it, man. You got ETFs coming out. The whole sector is pretty amazing. And what is it? Shiba Inu, somehow, uh, the new the new uh, alt-accelerated uh, um, Dogecoin crypto. I can't even get it out of my mouth it's kind of so crazy but always interesting and i got that chart up there man they go public it looks like under 10 last three days you're pushing 30 dollars 37.49 and uh amazon and apple before i let you leave kevin we're going to jump over on the analyze tab and I've asked you to do it many times. We're always getting new listeners, man. I love the one-day expected move. It really comes into play for earnings. We got about two minutes left in this seg segment, Kevin. I got Amazon up here. You got a, about a $109 move priced in for the earnings event. Can you just talk to the listeners a little bit again about how the, the platform for Thinkorswim kind of takes that number, when it presents it, and what it means, especially for option traders out there? Now, when the market maker move um, comes, uh, appears on the Thinkorswim platform, all it really does is measure the implied volatility in the front expiration. And when that implied volatility moves above the second expiration, which if you look at Amazon right now, the implied vol is 61.7. Next week, the November 5th expiration is 38.8. .8. So that relationship, when that front month volatility goes over the second expiration, it creates an event, right? It, it signals an event, and it creates a, a one-day market maker move. And so it measures the implied volatility and gives you the expected one-day move. In, this, in Amazon, it's $109. In Apple, it's only $3.60. So 
relatively, you know, higher but muted. And people ask, well, well where can I find that market maker move? It only comes up when that happens, when that implied volatility and the front expiration goes above the second expiration. Now, it's not the answer to how the stock is going to move. It's part of the question on how the stock is going to move. The answer is when the news comes out and the stock actually moves. So this is just an estimate based on the current implied volatility in the option. Tommy. I love it, man. It's just such important information. And once I wrap my head around it, it's, you know, I stare at it every single trade I make, Kevin, whether I'm trading options or not. If any type of event is coming in, you got to know what type of implied volatility the market's looking for. And it's right there. Well, Kevin, we look forward to the show as always, man. We, we appreciate the education. We'll be watching at noon Eastern time today. Have a great one, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. My pleasure always. Take care, man. Folks, we'll be right back for the open. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an Apex Predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got markets accelerating higher on the open as we're digesting supply and demand. We're digesting that GDP number at 830. We got a jobless claims number. We got a bunch of earnings coming into the stocks and looks like we're getting a pop across the board right now. There's your S&P action up to 4564 right now, up almost 20 points. NASDAQ 100 up about 90. You get the Dow up 95 right now and the Russell catching a bit as well, up 16 points. Quite a pullback the last couple of days over the Russell. 2321 down to 2248. We jump to Bitcoin. Bitcoin 
up $25, $2,700. Can't keep track of it quick enough at $61,855. Uh, I mentioned it to our man Kevin Hinks. They're talking about it in the den as well. Our man Dave White put it in there. Uh, so this one's an interesting one. And if you're not familiar, so Tom Brady, I think he's teamed up with FTX. Maybe it's the one he's with, but he's always, I follow him on social media. He's always out there, whether they're pumping out NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Uh, I think he's an investor in that company and he's always out there pumping it. I think he's probably making a lot of money out there with that company. Uh, cryptocurrency platforms like crypto.com. The first thing I thought is quite the URL, right? Crypto. Dot com. So it's grown its user base about tenfold since last year amid rising interest in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. And it's going to spend $100 million on a campaign starting 20 countries it's going to be airing in. Uh, it's going to star Matt Damon. It's going to be directed by cinematographer Wally Feister. Not familiar, but seems like he's a notable person from the way they phrase that there. Uh, it's linked with the Formula One, the UFC. Italy's top soccer league. They are no joke in terms of coming with it. Uh, it has deals with the French soccer club Paris Saint-Germain. Germain, that's one of the biggest clubs out there. Uh, the 76ers, the Canadians. I mean, they're all over the place. They're spending 100 million. The opportunities here seem to be endless with the amount of money that they're throwing. Uh, founded in 2016, based in Singapore, about 10 million customers for its app and crypto card program offered in conjunction with Visa. Visa. Visa had a tough day yesterday. We'll jump over to that. Uh, and he is an investor in crypto.com. So it's interesting, right? You're getting these crypto companies. They're bringing online huge stars. They're bringing them on as investors uh, and they're getting them behind them and nonetheless seems to be paying off. Um, yeah. So anyway, you'll start seeing those commercials and it's not going to stop in the crypto sector. You got crypto back above 61,000. All right. Jumping back. We talked about Comcast. I didn't get to their chart, but big numbers in Comcast. I was finishing up that conversation. Uh, 54 million signups as of July. Now, this one's an interesting one. Comcast is a very strong company. Bottom line. OK. Uh, oof, they didn't like whatever they're saying on the conference call, though. I saw that. I think it was the conference call because this thing fell out of bed before conference call started at 830. Fell out of bed at about 9, 10. I was trying to find what they were talking about. Yeah, and the only thing I found was that their CEO said that uh, Apple's going to bring Apple TV and Apple TV app to Xfinity, which is uh, Comcast. Didn't see the headline yet for what sent this thing cratering at about 9, 10 a.m. I imagine that was something because you're only about 30 to 40 minutes into the conference call. You opened down 4.4% after trading higher on their numbers. So something hidden in there um, that they were talking about. But when you see these numbers for Peacock, all I'm going to say is they're not real numbers, okay? Because all you had to do was drop in an email address during the Olympics that were going on, something like that, right? Download the app. And that's what I think I downloaded the app. I think I created an account because some of the Olympic coverage was going to be on Peacock. And I never ended up watching it. And now here I am being touted as a, as a loyal customer, right? signing up for peacock not the same not going to happen i don't envision myself watching that ever right now um there's just too much competition i pay for too many things that's the thing if you ever pay for something yourself it's like uh it's like a a kid if you know if you're a child and, and you go out you, you, the child has to work some chores and then they go out and they buy something it means a lot more they might take care of it a lot better as an adult if you're out there paying for a streaming service you're much more inclined to use that streaming service to rationalize the money that you're spending on it rightfully so I'm not paying for Peacock. They're not high on my list of content that I need to watch. I have cable in the house to watch NBC anyway. Um, so keep that in mind when you see these numbers because that's going to that's that's going to be something they continue to tout. But I don't think it fairly re reflects the amount of u viewers that they may actually have within that service. Um, nonetheless, pretty strong numbers, but the market not liking something going on in that conference call, I believe. And as I mentioned, Visa. Yeah, there was your action yesterday on Visa. The news came out yesterday afternoon that the Justice Department was actually probing something to do with their relationship with uh, incentives having to do with the fintech firms, uh, possible kickbacks, possible antitrust concerns. Not what you want to hear, especially following uh, the pullback they had. I joked with one of my friends. Uh, one of my best friends runs a credit card processing company out of New York. Um, 
mammoth company. They do about a billion dollars in processing a month for this credit card company. So they're doing $12 billion of just straight business. They have their hands on a lot of the pulses of going out there. Uh, Visa, they're a technology company in a big way now too. Now I bring it up because I was kind of kind of ribbing them a little bit yesterday with, with Visa's performance, asking if, if credit cards are a thing of the past because that's their business. Joking, 1 million percent folks. So I sent them this chart and then what I did is I pulled up the monthly and I said, you know what, I think you're gonna be fine because check out the monthly chart of Visa. Does it get any prettier than that, seriously? No matter what year you pick it, my goodness, this thing has been on a tear. The last few months you've pulled back, but you're talking about from what, choose a year you want, 10 bucks in 2009, uh, 50 bucks back in 2014, uh, $100 back in 2017, right? You're double that still, just a, just a consistent stock in a big way. Of course, you pulled back during COVID, like everything else, um, but Visa rebounding, struggling a little bit, but I imagine they are going to succeed in the future as they have continued to uh, in a big way, but they might have a little bit of concerns as they miss on some of their numbers yesterday. And then you got the news of the Justice Department coming out yesterday afternoon, their relationship probably a little bit too cozy with some of those FinTech firms. Uh, and you're seeing a sell off this morning. I mean, that's, that's nothing to shake your head at folks. You just dropped $5 in Visa in the span of about six minutes of trading. And we still have the markets in positive territory territory right now with the S&P's up 18 and the Nasdaq up 57. Let's jump around to some of the other companies with their earnings. Ford extending the gain up about 10.8 percent right now. We had Shopify numbers as well. Shopify trades lower last night. Conference call, pretty decent action, pretty marginal move. You're up 1.4 percent. Uh, my dad was talking about it on his program last night. We use Shopify, have used it for about three years, I think, which is crazy at this point. Um, very user-friendly platform. And what we actually use it for at TFNN is a lot more sophisticated. We do have to do some programming back end, um, a lot more sophisticated than actually what many companies need to do because we have recurring subscriptions for our newsletters, we have cancellations, um, there's there's some coding that has to go in there. And even that we're able to do, but when you're just talking about selling goods online, very, very simple process. They've intertwined it all and in the days of data protection, security, it's, as as somebody who manages the company, folks, not having to worry about just the pure um, protection of data, that element of things, because for the longest time, TFNN, we had our own servers, um, and we've always used a credit card processing company, and those would be the people that actually held the, the credit card data. We would not hold it ourselves just to prevent that data from being released, but you still manage all that data within your site, et cetera. And having Shopify be kind of your security partner where they're running everything, that alone for a business is so valuable these days. Um, because if you're talking about protecting your own servers, doing all that stuff, I mean, the world has changed in a big way. And Shopify, they talk about it on Fast Market, that in some ways they are a competitor to Amazon, servicing those small businesses. Uh, they're gonna open almost flat, down 1.7%. We are open, down 1.7% for Shopify. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back, take a look at Amazon. Are you right? in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have Apple up 1.3% coming into their numbers. Now, it's always staggering, folks. I've talked about it before. The number of shares that Apple has outstanding every time it, move, every time it moves a dollar, the market cap move in this equity is just remarkable in terms of what you're talking about. Now, I'm getting into jump over to the Analyze tab. You jump over to the Fundamentals tab on the Thinkorswim platform. Apple's got 16.5 billion shares outstanding. Every single dollar that it goes up, you're adding $16.5 billion in market cap. That means today, $33 billion in market capitalization added to Apple. Uh, remarkable. Now, I'm going to pull up uh, this email. Let me get this one correct. Oh, come on. You know what? I have to find it. I'll find it at the next break because i got to load these. Okay, I'm going to find it at the next break. It was going to be talking about Apple versus Amazon. Uh, excuse me, Apple versus Microsoft. No, you know what? Perfect. Here it is. This is the image I wanted. And uh, this service, it's its called, uh, what is it? It's called Charter? I mean, let me get it up to give them a uh, Charter, T-R, uh, dot C-O. And they basically just put data in charts. And I like graphics of things. Now, take a look at this chart, folks. Now, this has to do with Tesla joining the million dollar, the trillion dollar, let me, Yes, trillion dollar market capitalization club. Uh, what's really remarkable here is that Tesla comes out of nowhere, of course. I was talking to my dad last night and I said, you think inflation isn't here? We didn't even have a company, folks, that was, what is this above? 700, 800 billion dollar market cap until 2017. Okay, you had Apple become the most valuable company in the world and the first company ever to hit a trillion dollar valuation as recently as just more than three years ago. That seems bananas that we had never had a company with a trillion dollar market capitalization just before three years ago, where nowadays we have Apple and Microsoft pushing 2.3 to 2.4 trillion. We have Google closing on 2 trillion. We have Amazon out with their numbers tonight. They're at about 1.7 trillion. And we have Tesla and Facebook right near that $1 trillion level. Tesla above that level at this point. Not sure that Facebook is above that level right now. Uh, the other really cool statistic of this is how much of a gap Microsoft has made up on Apple this year alone. And this is Microsoft's in the blue here. And then you have Apple in the black. The beginning of 2021 is right here. At the beginning of 2021, Microsoft had a market capitalization of about 1.7 trillion. Apple was at a peak there of about 2.3. They had a $700 billion lead on Microsoft to kick off this calendar year, folks, in January. <coughs> Excuse me. And they've almost closed the gap by October. Now, to put that in context, there wasn't even a $700 billion company four years ago. This year alone, Microsoft 
has closed the gap on Apple by $700 billion, a market capitalization that didn't even exist four years ago. You look at these charts, now yes, technology's taken over, that's part of it, but it does point to some form of inflation, folks, when you just have stock prices through the roof, but the big dog's doing it in a big way. Uh, now, back to the charts. All right, so we're gonna walk through a couple of hy hypothetical trade setups. Um, of what you can do, and these are not trades I'm doing in my newsletter, okay, and they are not trades that I'm advising, period. They're just for demonstration purposes, and I'm stressing that because they're not even figuring in my market bias, okay? They're just things that I think are cool when I'm going through this that some people maybe you don't realize when you're talking about options, all right? Now, if you were bullish, let's go to Amazon because it's got so many big numbers in here. If you're bullish Amazon, Amazon's got about $120 move priced into the equity. Okay, so if you're now that's in either direction. So that means if you're buying an at the money call or put, it's going to be about $60 on either side that you'd have to make up in premium for an at the money. Now, what's so cool when you start playing with options, right, is that let's say you say to yourself, uh, I want to buy a, a call spread from 3,500 to 4,000. Okay, now let's say you want to go out all the way to December. Give yourself a little bit of room beyond what you're talking about in terms of just this expiration level. Now, maybe you think they're going to accelerate into the Christmas season. Now, ordinarily, okay, if you're buying the 3,500 call all the way in December, we're dealing with big numbers here in Amazon, okay? That's going to cost you 8,800 bucks. Now, maybe you want to offset some of that cost. And you, you don't think that you have much exposure above 4,000. If you do, you're able to get, you're willing to give up those opportunity costs. Uh, you get back about 11 bucks per contract. You're still paying for that spread, folks, from 3,500, which is the 88 dollars almost. You get 10 bucks back by selling a 4,000 call. You're still paying what almost 8,000 dollars about to get into that equity. Now, what's so cool is sometimes what you can do is you can sell a put spread below the market to get some premium. So what you're doing here is you're buying a call spread above the market, okay, which starts to gain value at 3,500. That's gonna cost you 80 bucks, but instead what you do is you say, you know what, but I'm fairly confident if it doesn't go up, that it might just stay in around this area between 3,300 and 3,500. Then what you do is you can sell a put spread for a credit from 3,300 to 3,150. Now what that does do is that increases your potential loss because you are the one covering the exposure from 3,300 to 3,150. Now these numbers are so big, what I wanted to demonstrate is that you're able to bring that cost down dramatically. When you tie it over to Apple, the trade setup is pretty cool when you can play with these. And this is why folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN. You know, they are a sponsor. We know we're biased, but I'd use it anyway if they weren't a sponsor, folks. Download the demo account and just play with some of these trades. You know, if you watch Fast Market, if you watch my program, my dad's, Larry, Basil, Steve, uh, you can walk through some of these. And so Apple, for instance, okay, going out to December, Apple right now is trading at 151. Okay, the trade I set up in here, I am basically buying a call spread from 160 to 170. And what I'm doing is to offset that cost, I'm selling a credit put spread from 145 to 140, okay? And I, from doing that, I break even all the way from 145 to 160 in this equity. Now again, Apple's trading at 150, okay? But what, then what I'm able to do is, I have a $1,000 potential profit if I trade to 170 or above, I have a $500 potential loss if I trade to 140 or below. And again, with a break even between 145 and 160. Uh, I point it out because if you're on the platform, you play with some of these positions, I think it's pretty cool when you start to, to realize the flexibility that you have in some of these. And that's Kevin Hinks talked about it, okay? You wouldn't necessarily ex execute this as one trade. Uh, the way to do it, that would probably have the best chance of getting executed at the best price would be to execute them individually where you would buy a call spread, you would sell a put spread, you'd sell them as two different trades, you would be paying, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk it through as we finish this up, all right, to show you exactly how they would line up here. So again, I was going to the December contracts, I was buying a 160 call, which is about a buck 94, I was selling the 168, Excuse me, I did it the wrong way there. I was buying. There we go. So ordinarily, that would cost me a buck twenty-eight. Okay, to show you what that looks like, I have a loss all the way up to one sixty with this trade. 
But then what you do is you add selling that put spread. I just want to talk about it because when you see it visually, it's pretty cool how those line up. We'll finish setting up this trade so you can see it just to get your mind thinking about the possibilities uh, as we come into both of those earning events tonight. And man, watch out for this market. It is not stopping, folks. S&Ps right now up 27 points. We got the NASDAQ up 85, the Dow up 176. We'll be right back to finish up the show, folks. Stay tuned. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up 26 points. I just want to jump over and finish this conversation to just get, ooh, I don't know if you heard that thunder, but we got some rain going on right now outside my window. Uh, hopefully we stay on the air for a few more minutes. So setting this up, it's two different trades. You're buying, and again, just for demonstration, folks, I'm not even bullish on Apple coming into earnings. I'm not bullish on them going through December. I'm just walking you through how you can set these trade setups in a way that's pretty cool that not a lot of people realize. So very simply, you know, it's as simple as do you buy a call or sell a put, right? Then you have, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a call spread from 160 to 170. This goes out through December. The problem with that, you might see, is you say, ah, it's a bummer that I'm going to pay a buck 39. So I lose $139 per contract if Apple stays under 160. Uh, Apple right now trading at 151.87. Okay. But then, as I mentioned, now I split them up into their own trades here. You sell a put spread and you can see the difference here. Okay. You're collecting about a dollar credit for the put spread, you're paying a buck 42 for 
The call spread, when you add it to the graph, you can see what it does. Now, what it basically does is you got a $40 difference, okay, on this equity because you're taking in a uh, dollar credit, but you got to pay a dollar forty-one. But what is kind of cool is you have a thousand dollar potential profit per a trade here if Apple gets to one seventy by December 17th, and you have a $500 loss if it gets to 140. So what you've basically said is, I'm willing to take losses on Apple from 145 to 140. If you're willing to give me profits in Apple from 160 to 170 through December, that's a pretty cool trade if your position lines up that you think Apple, no way over three months is it trading lower by $5. Right, so maybe it's gonna stay the same. I think it has the ability to shoot up, you know, another 10, 15% by the end of the year. Just something to think about as you walk through options, folks, because you see that line, you're pretty close to even, and then you can start playing with, you know, even further. You don't you wanna make sure you actually lock in a profit, cut down your call spread to 165, and guess what? Just like that, you got a $14 profit if Apple stays between 160 and 145, and then you just have an even loss under there for 500, you've capped your profits at 500 to the top. Something to think about, folks. Thanks so much for starting your day. Stay tuned. We got Basil up next. Larry at 11. Fast Market at 12. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien all this afternoon. Have a great Thursday, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.